life had kept the planet warm. And now life was bringing chaos and disaster. What we have learned is that when there is a mass extinction, in the aftermath, those organisms that are quick off the mark and can take advantage of empty eco-space and seize those places, even if they're not the most advanced or most suitable organisms, if they can get there first and establish their foothold, they can be very difficult to dislodge. And so after each mass extinction, there's a new biota which takes hold and becomes ascendant for a long period of time, perhaps until the next, next mass extinction. Scientists believe that if there were snowball events then, they must have persisted for millions of years. During that time, the face of the planet would have seemed a frozen and desolate wasteland, as parts of Iceland are today. There was perhaps a chance that life could survive in water beyond the oceans, living from the heat and energy that comes from the Earth itself. Iceland is known for its volcanic and thermal activity. The land has only a thin crust above the heated mantle of the planet. It sits very close to awesome power and force. Hot springs are found across the island where the heat of the earth forces its way out. Places like these could have been a safe haven for microorganisms which like the heat, the thermophiles. Dr. Vigo Martinson and his team work for a company which hopes to use rare microbes for research. Temperature field, so very, uh, the steaming coming up from depth deep down in the earth. And it's places like this where thermophiles can live. Where the water bubbles out, it's too hot for just about any living organism. But cooler edges are full of bacterial life. Look, this is great. This is uh, all covered with cyanobacteria. This is rich uh, all kinds of species. The life in these pools is made up mainly of bacteria which photosynthesize. The microbes cluster together to form thick mats. The earliest evidence of organisms like this appear before the first snowball event. Even then, the green filaments of cyanobacteria would have clustered together. Around them are other microbes able to tolerate high temperatures, living off the nutrients. Perhaps this was also where our distant ancestors found shelter from the ice. The geothermal area is a refuge for life. Life like this, where you can find cyanobacteria, or you can also find all different kinds of broad range of diversity of different kinds of bacteria. Maybe the planet needed a disaster like a snowball Earth to let new forms of life take strides forward. Shortly after the ice melted, life had changed greatly, even if it was still minute. This is a microorganism known as chonoflagellate. It's an unusual group of microbes which cluster together in colonies. These are the closest known ancestors of animals, and us. And for the next billion years, life stood still. There were no further advances. If we were to compare the Earth's history to a single year, then microscopic creatures were life's main force up until mid-November. But the second snowball event, about 600 million years ago, was to change that forever.
Life's history is painted in its rocks. This barren wasteland was once the bed of an ancient ocean. Namibia in southern Africa is mostly a harsh and arid land. But this means that the rocks that lie upon the surface are relatively undisturbed by water erosion or moved by flooding. Etched into some of the scattered rocks are strange shapes and forms. As well as here, on a Namibian farm, similar fossils have been found in Siberia, Australia and Newfoundland. On the other side, you see the positive outcrops of, of the same fossil. Fossils, certainly. But fossils of what? For us as lay, laymen, we, we didn't know what it was. It could be anything from a fish or, or a fern. Actually, it, it looks more like a fish. But uh, then later on, even the scientists weren't sure whether it was a plant or whether it was a living organism. These fossils date back to the end of the second snowball event, and they were neither fish nor leaf. They were the first living creatures larger than microbes to appear on the planet. These were giant steps forward in evolution. This one was named Pteridinium, and scientists think that it may have lived on the sea floor, half buried in the mud. They have a body shape and form which resembles nothing living in the modern age. So too with this strange creature found in Siberia and named Georgia. A stone with five strange fossil marks is a record of this animal's movements on the seafloor. This is the first time in the history of the planet that a living creature moved with direction and purpose. This one, too, comes from Siberia and has been named Kimbarella. It had a snail-shaped body and a strange, long protrusion which allowed it to feed from the sea floor. The first time that any creature had dug in the mud, releasing nutrients back into the water. This period after the second snowball earth is called the Ediacrum, after a range of hills in South Australia where similar fossils were found. And somewhere among these creatures was the ancestor for modern life. It might have been this. A fossil discovered in Australia in 2003. Some think here is evidence of a backbone perhaps making this creature the size of an adult's small finger, the predecessor of the vertebrates. We can only speculate as to how 